All right, ladies and gents, we're back. My apologies for the long channel silence. Life got a little hectic and I bought a truck so the funds weren't quite there for this project, but we're back on it now. I did get some stuff done. Uh, I got this exhaust and put it in. Uh, I just didn't, re well I recorded it. I didn't make a video because it was some of the driest content you had ever seen, like December 1st, leftover Thanksgiving turkey dry. So, yeah. You didn't get a video about that. It's pretty basic. I just hooked the exhaust up to the engine and kind of figured out what I need to do. I did have to shorten the main pipe right there. Um, I didn't really want to modify it too much. And as far as the can goes, it's around here somewhere. I don't know. Uh, but I'm not even going to use it. There's not really enough space, and the thing weighs like 40 pounds. So we're uh, we're going to build our own can. And then I got the wiring harness in. Again, just super dry content. We're going to have to figure out how to where to mount all this stuff. I got the little foot cubby hole things taken out, um, and I'm just going to be plating that because. You don't really need it uh, for what the kind of riding that this sled has is built for. And also, um, that gives me a lot of space to mount some of that electrical stuff down in there. So, yeah, so that's where we are. Um, the next thing I was worried about was a cooler. Since we are switching over to liquid cooled, and today I think I found the solution for that. Now what I wanted, since I have to extend the, the tunnel, was I wanted a big flat cooler on the back, right? So I could just use it to extend the tunnel and it would be in the back. The belt is really close to the tunnel up there towards the front. So I didn't want long a long cooler that was way up there. And I think I basically found the perfect thing. And that is the cooler from, it was an Articat Wildcat. Um, what year, I don't know. Uh, but I didn't really stop to look all too much. The Articat tunnel is a little wide, but I can skinny it up and I mean that's perfect. That's the belt doesn't get close until about up here. So it keeps my cooler back and away from it. And uh, yeah, works really good. It's a good size cool. It's one of the bigger rear mount ones. Um, so now our challenge with the cooler is super easy to mount. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take all the rivets out and actually take it out of this tunnel. And skinny the tunnel up, which you get, this is like a three piece tunnel. So it's just, I have to unrivet everything. I'll rivet the sides back onto mine and rivet the top back in and the cooler. So it's really not gonna be that challenging. But uh, then the challenging part is gonna be how I run the lines. So on the Articat, the lines just come right down the, the, this side of the tunnel and the fuel tanks kinda cut out for them. Uh, and I did, I got the lines. So I got the lines out of that Wildcat. And then I, next to it was a, a ZR, so I don't know, it was, it was an Articat still. And it had longer lines, so I stole them just in case I needed longer lines, I had them. Because I have a TIG welder, it's a lot easier for me to make lines shorter than it is to make lines longer. And then I robbed a little uh, Kawasaki Mojave um, coolant reservoir. Because the, the VMAX one wouldn't fit in it, the Phaser didn't have one. So now, uh, so now I've got that. And the other problem, the VMAX reservoir was also the oil tank. Like they were all built into one. 
And so, like right here is where the phaser oil tank would have sat. That's not going to work anymore. So I'm thinking, I'm kind of thinking for now I'm just going to premix it and we'll deal with it. Uh, unless I can find a small oil tank. I actually thought maybe a weed whacker uh, gas tank and something like that. Just something really small. I mean, it's going to use a lot of oil. It wouldn't be like a long term, a long ride solution, but it would work. It would get me get me there but i think the best the best thing for right now would be for me to just premix it and that's what i think we're going to do so um yeah i'm actually gonna get the tank and set it on there and we'll look at you know my options for lines okay so in the wildcat both of these lines were ran down like right there so you see why that's a problem for me um it's i mean i don't know if one would if i take that that off if it would barely fit through there but i think i have a might maybe a little bit of trimming and still i could take this and almost notch it uh, and then TIG weld it back together because that this is just for the the cover that goes over it so I could take this off and flatten it out and then just rivet it to the side so it wouldn't have any interference on the actual top and I think that might work we might have to do a little bit of trimming in here um, but again, that wouldn't be a big deal. And then I wonder if we could just run the other one down the other side. That one gets a little tighter. A little tighter in there. That could be bent out. Yeah, I think as far as routing the lines, I mean, that's just physical, physical stuff. I could make it work. Make it work. It might be easier. I'm almost wondering if I can cut that support and move it up so I can actually put the tank like on top of something. And then I would have space under the tank. But then that's going to change a lot of stuff as far as the panels. But. Um, you can probably tell from the exhaust and its location, uh, the factory, the stock phaser hood is not going to work on this thing. I'm going to have to make a kind of a custom one. I've always kind of wanted to mess around with a little carbon fiber, so I mean, maybe we'll try that. It'd probably be a process, but for now, I think we're just going to get it running and leave the hood off of it um, because it's March. It's March 2nd right now, so... Uh, yeah, and we actually got some snow today. Like, this is, uh, between today and yesterday. Not yesterday. I don't know. Today when I woke up, it was a nice, peaceful, straight down, no wind, super fluffy snow. And it just makes me so mad because I've wanted that kind of snow all year. And all we get is 50 mile an hour winds while it's snowing and then it turns everything into rock hard drifts and there's no coverage. So it makes sense. It makes sense that now it's, you know, now it's gonna snow how I want it. But anyways, I think I wanna get the end of the tunnel on and then we'll spend a little more time looking into the, the fuel tank. I don't think those pipes are going to fit inside of the tunnel with how close the belt is unless I can get some elbows to weld on them so they can come up right in front of the tank. But anyways, let's get to getting this tunnel cut apart and yeah, see you there. 
All right, so looking at the bottom of this tunnel, I got the little side covers off. So what I gotta do is I gotta, there's a seam right here. I'm gonna take this piece off. So the back, the tail is a little thinner anyways. But I need to take these mounts off because we aren't gonna be using them. And then actually cut the side at kind of the line I want because I'm not gonna be using that that uh, the running board anyways so so once we get that uh, we're gonna get this bumper off and then I want to take the, the slides out which I, I don't think those bolts are factory because there's also Phillips head um, so I gotta get those out I got one of them out um, so I have to get one of those out. And this is the concerning area of this whole uh, cooler. This looks like something hit it, if my camera will focus. But uh, it should be fine. I have a TIG welder. If, if it's leaking, I'm just going to weld the hole closed. And we'll call it good. But... Uh, yeah, I think it should work good. It's it's not even that much too wide. Which is why it's kind of a shame I have to I have to do all this work to it, but I I don't want the back of my tunnel to be wider than the front, even if it's just by a quarter inch. So So yeah, we're gonna get to it. Um I'll probably just grind out all of these rivets and all these rivets. And then on the top, I'm going to grind all the ones around the outside off. Um, I tried to drill a couple of them when I was up at Lost Viking just so I could take just the, just the tunnel out. And then I was just going to cut another phaser tunnel off and kind of mount it in it, but this works. It's, I can make it work. So I didn't really want to cut two sleds apart, but uh, almost bought another phaser while I was up there. He had one that was missing just the rear suspension and the seat and the engine turned over. So. I thought about it, but I gotta get this one done first. So, let's get to it.
All right, so I got all the junk cut off of the, the sides of this tunnel that I need. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just tape a line to match this one and take that right to the front. Uh, then it'll be the same on both sides. And then we'll get them riveted on the, on the phaser and start uh, start changing other things. I'm gonna have to cut that plate down. This one will be a little tricky because it's got, and it's folded on the ends. So hopefully I can just put, put those pieces inside of this now and uh, hopefully that'll work because this will be a little bit of a pain to cut down if I have to. So, so let's get to it. I'm gonna go get some tape and then we'll get to cutting that. All right, so I got them cut. Turned out pretty good. So what I'll have to do on this, I'll have to actually take my plate off for my rear suspension mount. And I um, should probably get the, the rivets out of the old rear track mount. Um, and then I'm just gonna fit those other side panels on to extend it and match them up. Make sure they're straight across and uh, just put a couple rivets in them for now just to hold them and get them in place. Okay, so I got the cooler on. Looks pretty good, it's almost factory. Not really. But uh, back here, this corner, I'm gonna have, to, I'm gonna have to change up. I think I'm just gonna slice this back piece down and uh, kind of bend this piece to be a little more square. I'm gonna make a big bracket to come out to a handle anyway, so it should be hidden. And I'm gonna put a lot more rivets in the sides and everything, but I gotta get the the footboards cut off of the phaser tunnel but uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it looks it's uh, 
It's a little, a little thick at the back for my liking, but I kind of want that a little extra support for the cooler. It's almost more sturdy than the 151. But uh, now, we got the cooler in, I put the gas tank in. Just to kind of, so everybody can get an idea of what I'm dealing with here. Um, because it used to be these pipes just went right up to the front. And so that's not going to work now. I don't know if I can... What I can do here, but... If I can find a different gas tank that'll fit in there, or I thought about looking for some aluminum, uh, like square stock or rectangle stock, whatever, like a three quarter by one and a half or something. Probably more of a half, like a half by two. Um, and then I could have this come out from the from the cooler. I could have them both over here like it was in the normal one. And then I would just have holes that would go in and I would put them underneath. And then they'd come back up in front of the tank. Here, that's not going to be laying down like that. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to have to order some... See about ordering some aluminum. Whatever this glue is that was on here that Articat apparently uses to hold their seats down, that stuff is nasty. Like, I didn't notice it when I first got this because it was cold and it was frozen, but getting it in the shop and it warmed up, and I had this stuck to my sweatshirt, and it took a pretty good amount of force to get it off. So, be aware of that if you go looking for one of these coolers. Don't set anything on it. But yeah, I think as far as the chassis with, the, I gotta get the footboards cut off because I'm gonna do tube, tube footboards. Um, the chassis is pretty much done. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. My seat should be over these, so I I won't be snapping them off. Hopefully. Um, as far as I could tell, there were no leaks in it. I filled it up with hot water. Maybe it'll maybe it'll leak when it's pressurized. That's usually what happens. But uh, when that happens, we'll deal with it. I mean, it's just aluminum rivets. It's not that hard to get back out. All right, guys. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you want to keep up with this, uh, it's going to be a lot more frequent videos now, hopefully. Um, hit that subscribe button. Keep up with it. And I'll see you guys next time.